Hi there. In this tip, I'd like to talk a little bit about one of the MoGraph objects and how it relates to piles of objects. Now this might seem kind of strange at first, but this is a really important feature to me because I use the broadcast version of Cinema 4D. So the broadcast version is missing a few of the more high-end features like uh, dynamics, uh, the ability to render hair and fur, uh, caustics, some of the more advanced features that your everyday user doesn't really need. But one of the features that it's missing that really hurts is the dynamics. Cinema 4D's dynamics are really awesome. Now, for most of us, when we need to use dynamics, we just need to show an object falling, or we need to show a bunch of objects in a pile or scattered. And you can actually do that with the MoGraph objects. Now, this may seem like old news to a lot of you guys, but I'm a really old school Cinema 4D user. So when the MoGraph tools were introduced, it took me a while to get up to speed with them. I'm still not very, uh, very competent with all of the MoGraph tools, but this is a little something that I've been playing around with, and I hope that you guys enjoy this. So I'm just going to start off with a plane and a cube. So let's make a nice orange material for the plane. And then sort of a light blue material for the cube, just so we can see them a little bit better. Now, most of the time, when somebody wants to use something with dynamics, we just want to show an object falling. So the MoGraph cloner has the ability to do this. If we create a cloner and put our cube in it, we get three clones by default. But we can actually just turn this countdown to one, move our cloner higher up, maybe rotate it a little bit, and then we can add a simulation tag to it. So we can add a uh, rigid body tag to it. And when we press play, it falls. So that looks like a good start, but now we need to have it collide with the plane. So we take our plane and we add a simulation tag of a collider body. Now when we press play, the cube collides. Now this demo I just showed you right here is probably enough for most people. You just need to take your cube, you need to, maybe it's a box. So let's give it like sort of a box shape, like if it's a product. We just take our product and we set up our camera at a nice elevated angle. We press play and the product falls on the ground. Like that's that's perfect. That just saved you so much animation time. So it's really good for one object, but it does amazingly well with many objects. We can see a really good example of that by just setting our cloner back to zero. I'm just going to zero out its position and rotation. And instead of just doing a regular cloner object, I'm going to change it from linear to a grid array. So this gives us an array of objects. And what we can do is sort of scale it down, scale the cube up, and we have a grid of objects. These objects are all going to collide with each other when we press play. So that's really good. And I've used this effect in the past for uh, creating falling books. So I modeled a bunch of books and I wanted to display them in a pile on the ground. So I used that exact technique to basically create a big pile of books. And then when I was happy with it, I stopped it. I just let everything play until some of them fell through the floor and all that other stuff. And I just have this pile of books and then I could get in close and render it from whatever angle. And I mean, this would have taken hours to place each book by hand. So that's a really good use for this. Another cool thing that you can do is add some variation to it. Now, you know, forgive me if this tip is a little bit pedestrian. I know that there have been a lot of Dynamics tutorials using MoGraph. I just wanted to try my hand at it. But if you have the cloner object selected, and then you go to Effector and choose a random effector, it gets automatically added in the effectors list. We can then go to this random effector. Instead of randomly affecting the position, we can randomly affect the rotation. And then we can just tweak these values a little bit. If we're dealing with falling objects, it doesn't usually matter what type of rotation is affected as long as there's some variation. And then we can hit play, and they all sort of fall a little bit more randomly. 
Another thing that we can do with the cloner object that's really cool is that you can use multiple types of objects in it. Again, this is sort of more graph 101, but just in case some people don't know about these features. So if I put my oil tank and my cube in the cloner, it sort of uses both types of objects. And let's get a material on the oil tank. Something really simple. And so we can just press play and they both interact. So I hope you're beginning to see a few ways that you can use this because it's really powerful. Even though it's not a full featured dynamics tool set, you can accomplish most of the effects that you want with this. Uh, before I go, I just want to show you one more feature. In the cloner object, when you choose a grid or a linear clone, you can actually, uh, you can actually choose the way that the clones are duplicated. Iterate means it goes oil tank cube, oil tank cube. But we can actually change it to random. If we reset the scene, we can go back up and see that it's now randomly placed. And the random seed is sort of the, the, the value that Cinema 4D uses to start the pseudo random noise before it actually decides what random order they'll be in. So before I wrap it up, I just wanted to show you guys another project I was working on just as an experiment, and it's a fire pit. So I have this simple landscape here with a few rocks and some sticks, some small sticks that fall down first. And then once I'm happy with the way they've fallen, I can enable the dynamics on the large sticks and they fall in on top. And really quickly, we can have sort of a fire pit without having someone go in there and actually place these objects exactly where they need to be. And none of the sticks are intersecting everything collided just fine. It's a really, really awesome way to uh, set up a scene when you need a little bit of dynamics, but maybe you don't have the broadcast. Uh, maybe you don't have studio, all you have is broadcast. The MoGraph object can actually do quite a lot of dynamic stuff. One thing I forgot to mention about this scene is uh, a hidden collider that I've got here. So you'll notice that when these sticks fall, they sort of fall into an invisible funnel. And I can make that funnel visible. So what I did is I just created a collider object that acts as a funnel and guides the sticks down into the fire pit. This is a trick that you can use and uh, it really helps when trying to wrangle objects that are randomly falling into a specific space. So all I did was I created a cylinder, modified it a bit, and then added one of these dynamics body tags to it. So once I did that, I can then hide the object from the editor and the renderer. And when you play it through, it funnels them very neatly into the fire pit. I forgot to mention that when recording the tip initially. So I'm just going to tack this onto the end. So I hope you enjoyed this tip. And until next time, see ya.